Welcome back to the weekly review with me, Siti Norapsai Juswar. Now, Russia has a market economy with enormous natural resources, particularly oil and natural gas. It has the 10th largest economy in the world by nominal gross domestic product and the 6th largest by purchasing power parity, PPP. All the export earnings allowed Russia to increase its foreign reserves from a 12 billion US dollars in 1999 to 597.3 billion dollars on August 1st, 2008, the third largest foreign exchange reserve in the world. So I had a chance to talk to Russian Federation Trade Representation, uh, Deputy Trade Representative Maxim Borov on Russia's emerging economy and the move of diversifying the country's portfolio. All right, so Maxim, can we start off with the first questions? You know, Russia has been experiencing some rapid growth over the years. What are key factors uh, that, that contributed to the growth? And maybe you can talk about uh, the major sectors that actually you know, uh, have a valid relationship with Malaysia in terms of trade. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you for your questions. Okay. First, thank you for coming <laughs> for the time, because Ramadan, is very, <laughs> as, as we know, is very difficult to get for mm. Muslims. And when it's coming to the end, it's yeah. much more it's high right. important. It's celebration, it's like Christmas. Despite that, yeah, thank you for coming again. Uh, okay, I would like to say yes, um, uh, Russian economy is, uh, is growing, uh, hopefully, but uh, probably we expected that it could uh, grow much higher and much uh, better uh, speed. But um, you said that record, uh, it was a rapid growth. I, I'm, I'm not sure about the rate. Uh, I can tell you that uh, actually, yes, we, we have a good uh, numbers, we have a good figures when we uh, estimate our economy. But uh, there are a lot of troubles also uh, on this way. Uh, we have a lot of obstacles uh, and this way is not actually smooth and easy. Um, so the year 2009 was uh, especially... Yes, yes that, that year uh, all the countries, I think, most of the countries and also in this region, uh, there were many, especially uh, that ones uh, which are more developed. So uh, we fixed the minus growth uh, for most of the economies in the region. And uh, Russia is also not uh, an exemption in this process. And uh, the, the drop of Russian economy, economy was actually uh, quite a big, uh, more than 7.8, 7, 7 if I'm not mistaken. 7.8 so, uh, since, uh, since 2009? If we compare it with 2008, mm -hmm. year over a uh, year. Uh, so, so year on year, 7.8%? Yeah. Mm, minus a uh, drop, it was a drop. Oh, it was a huge drop, yeah. Yes, just a huge drop. Three years ago, yeah. Mm -hmm. But now uh, we, can, we can be a little bit happy because uh, the year 2010 and 2011 we managed to get uh, 4.3. And uh, we expect this year also will be. Uh, Quite, uh, quite good for statistics, but statistics actually uh, not always uh, can uh, show us what, what's a, uh, what's the real way we, uh, we we have to go, what uh, actual um, measures we must uh, take to, to overcome all these uh, difficulties. Uh, speaking about Russian economy, uh, all around the world, all we know that Russia is uh, highly dependent on. Uh, Commodity prices, mm. uh, oil, gas. Yes, oil and gas. Yeah. Yes, and other. Yeah, uh, Russia has been like the 12th uh, countries, I mean, 12th uh, spot in the world for the oil and gas uh, refinery, right? Uh, I think that Russia now is uh, on the first place. Uh, first place now. Speaking about extracting of uh, oil. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, I'm not sure about the gas, but it's second or third one of the US and uh, some other country. Mm -hmm. So. By deposits, Russia also in the top three, both oil and gas. And of course, uh, the influence of oil prices for natural uh, resources, for commodities, is very uh, influential on Russian budget, on Russian economy, and we are very, very dependent on that. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, if we, uh, if we just extract all this um, share, what was given to the Russian economy growth, in year 2009, when I said about the drop, 7.8%, and we, if you look on the Russian industry, Russian economy without oil and gas, we can find that uh, actually the drop was not so huge. 
uh, only 0.5 something percent we lost that year. But now we can, uh, of course, we can tell that uh, for these two years and a half we, we managed to get uh, back uh, all losses and uh, now the economy is developing uh, with, a, with a good speed, uh, maybe not so high, not so vibrant as uh, many uh, Asian countries, but um, we must understand that Russia is uh, not a small country, not an island. Uh, I can compare with uh, Singapore mm -hmm. uh, because it's uh, very it's close to Malaysia. Yeah, it's it's not a Singapore Russia. The climate is very difficult. The weather condition is uh, uh, something incredible. Yeah. The territory, the infrastructure expenses, everything is uh, absolutely different. And if we speak about Russia, uh, what is coming to my memory is uh, the phrase, uh, the quote of one famous uh, German uh, Deutsch uh, Chancellor who lived more than 100 years ago, uh, I'm sure you know about Otto von Bismarck. Uh, when he characterized Russia, he said that Russian man, um, Russian man harnesses uh, the horse slowly, but drives them very, very fast. Uh, do you understand the meaning? That we, we are very, very slow in preparation in all what we do from the first. But when the, this machine, when this locomotive will be in a good speed, we will go straight and uh, hopefully there's no uh, real obstacles. So that, that's what happened in the OIS exit? Uh, I mean, uh, yes, no, no, I'm, I'm speaking in, in about Russian economy, not about oil and gas. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, speaking about oil and gas, yes, this is very irritating theme, irritating topic for uh, for Russia, for most of Russian people. Uh, okay, so we are proud about uh, having so much uh, natural resources in Russia, but actually this is a big headache for Russia because we need to diversify our economy. We need to make it much more smart and vibrant as you managed to do in Malaysia, by the way. No, because not to put the eggs all in one basket and uh, consume all yes, on all the No, no, I'm speaking about the development uh, of economy. If we uh, look in the future and if we just try to find out a way to, to feed our children and grandchildren right. with a good food. We uh, can just depend on one thing. Yes, yes, of course. And uh, by the way, uh, looking on Malaysian economy, uh, there is very good points we probably can learn from your country, uh, speaking about Russia, because you export a lot of commodities. You export palm oil, rubber, oil, gas, everything. But at the same time, you manage to uh, make your economy quite smart. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, leading factories, leading makers uh, having factories in Malaysia. You produce a lot of uh, high-tech and value-added uh, products. That's very, very important for the country. We need, we need to learn and we need, by the way, to cooperate. Right. As, uh, and uh, what I was, uh, what I forgot to, to say, that uh, by the way, Russia and Malaysia are very similar. And this year we, we can commemorate the 45th anniversary of our trade relation. Mm -hmm. uh, the first uh, trade uh, agreement, trade treaty, uh, was signed in the year um, 1967. So, uh, diplomatic relation between our countries was established later. That's unique situation. That's uh, for for the uh, for the most of the countries when uh, they try to develop relation, they they start from embassies, they start from diplomatic relations. But in case with Malaysia, we started trade, and uh, probably that's why we need to develop more especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, when, when you say, you know, uh, through the years since 1967, yeah. you know, what, what has uh, both the Malaysia and Russia achieved in terms of bilateral trade? Um, till now, mm -hmm. unfortunately, unfortunately I, I, I'm, I'm so sorry to say that, but uh, actually we have a huge potential mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, needed to be filled up much more. Right. Uh, the bilateral trade between our countries is less than uh, 2 billion uh, US dollars per year. Per year, year on year? Year on year statistic, yeah. uh, trade, over, trade over, I'm speaking of trade on mm -hmm. So, uh, last year uh, data shows us that uh, we achieved only 1.95. Uh, this uh, is because of why? Uh, the, 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 the trade is not, uh, the, the, actually this is not a decline. Comparing with the previous this is year, growth. yeah, this is growth, maybe 15 or 17 percent. But uh, if we look on nominal figures, uh, actually, it's not so big. Uh, it uh, it is uh, 0.3 percent in Malaysian trade with foreign countries, mm -hmm. and the same level about the Russia. So we are not a key partners in trade between each other. Uh, the reason is probably that the logistic and the, we are very very far from each other. Mm -hmm. uh, Malaysia and Russia, 
we, we even unfortunately don't have any, any direct fight these days. Uh, people cannot communicate. We are very similar, but uh, we have a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, in terms of the language barrier, yeah, and yeah. also the policy. Yes, of, of the course, Russians Russia. they don't know Bahasa. <laughs> Malaysians, uh, not many of them knows uh, Russian. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but there, there must be a thin line where you know we can actually uh, you know interact in terms of bilateral trade. Yes, uh, if we speak about trade, by the way, we should start from the easier point. We we need to show to our people how to what is Russia. Because I'm sure, working here for two years, I, I, I'm surprised that most of Malaysians they don't know Russia. They don't know uh, where is it, what is the capital? Uh, it's Moscow. Uh, Moscow, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, you know about that. But uh, this is a, actually a big uh, gap in education and big gap in our uh, bilateral diplomatic uh, relation. Maybe. I'm not speaking about war, but what is uh, our embassy doing? Uh, of course, that's not uh, they. Uh, but um, we, we need to do uh, much more to, so to develop, into, to interact, to uh, communicate between each, uh, between our peoples. We, we need to probably advertise much more the Russian tourist um, destinations in Malaysia and Malaysian resorts in Russia. Uh, most of Russians uh, these days prefer to go to Thailand, to Bali, to Indonesia, but not so to is Malaysia. It because of the, um Flight schedule? Uh, flight is also a problem, but uh, there are quite many other problems. Uh, of course, if we speak about tourists, they prefer uh, cheaper destinations. Mm -hmm. uh, they know what is Thailand, they know how Thailand is open for, and how Thailand resorts are easy for Russian tourists. Even in uh, many of restaurants in Thailand, you can find many in Russian language. Mm -hmm. That's very easy to go to. That's a bar in Thailand or Russian? Yeah, yeah, bar Russian. Bar yeah. Russian yeah. By the way, I, I, I was surprised that I was, uh, I found, when I was in Lankavi last year, mm -hmm. I found one restaurant with the name USSR, USSR, <laughs> and the lady who is the owner, uh, she's from Uzbekistan, ah, yes. very good Russian kitchen, mm -hmm. and not only Russian, also center from Central Asia, if you, by any, mm -hmm. any chance, will go there, yeah. Oh, yeah. I still need to come in to go there, very, very delicious. And Okay. Food, yeah. We should do a, a <laughs> section on food, Russian food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. Um, so when, when you talk about the uh, Russian trade, you know, tourism, uh, what are the needs to actually, you know, uh, the Russian, both Russia and Malaysia, to uh, you know, sit together and actually, you know, uh, collaborating in terms of projects? You know, do you have any recent projects that you are working on? Uh, tourism, tourism is a very important, uh, important field and very important sector to develop. But uh, actually, we, as a part of, uh, as a Russian trade representation, we are not involved in the, pro in the process of uh, developing uh, this destination. But uh, as far as I know, in Russia, we have a special agency, tourism agency. This is like a status, like a ministry, but a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, they work hard, they are trying to find out new destinations, they work with uh, Russian tourist companies. By the way, we have uh, uh, employees in, uh, in our staff in uh, trade representation who came originally initially from this agency uh -huh. and they can, yeah, maybe in future they can uh, help us to, to develop these because, uh, because actually tourism is uh, very important for, for mm -hmm. our two countries and uh, we need to get much more collaboration between maybe agencies uh, and ministries, uh, government authorities of uh, Malaysia and Russia. As far as I know, last year, uh, the Minister of uh, Tourism of Malaysia, uh, Ms. Uh, Ngu, okay. yeah, yeah, right? she was in Russia and she was actually very surprised and very happy to see how, how it goes in Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, what is Russia uh, actually as a country, as a tourism destination? Right. And a good opportunity for Malaysians to see uh, uh, to Russia on the spot uh, in the country, inside the country, is to maybe to use not, not so many events uh, left, but uh, this year Russia is uh, hosting uh, APEC. Uh, APEC. Uh, APEC uh, is, is, there any, uh, yes. is there any chance that uh, the Russian embassy can sponsor us to, to go for the, for the I'm, not, I'm not sure about sponsorship. <laughs> uh, you should better go to the embassy and ask them. But what I can tell you that uh, many, many Malaysians this year visited uh, many Russian cities. That was not only in the capital in Moscow, that was in uh, St. Petersburg, in Russian mm -hmm. Muslim region, by the way, Tatarstan, uh, the capital is Kazan. 
that was a meeting of ministers responsible for trade and Minister Mustafa was there and as far as I know he was also very uh, delighted uh, right, right. by uh, all things there and uh, the last event and the most important and significant one we will uh, hold next month early September in Vladivostok that will be a summit uh, at the leaders week mm -hmm. so Prime Minister of Malaysia hopefully will go as well uh, this is a very good choice for mass media by the way for journalists to, to highlight uh, the region of uh, Primorsky mm -hmm. uh, as we call it in uh, Russian language so uh, to go to Vladivostok and to see how, how it goes there are a lot of um, actually uh, natural opportunities for tourism uh, mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. if, if I may ask uh, how, how many is it, how much is the tourist receipt for I mean for Malaysia or uh, Russians from uh, Russia to go to Malaysia and coming? Well, uh, you're speaking about the number of the number, yeah. people are coming in. Uh, I'm not sure about this statistic, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe just a couple of thousand uh, ah, per year. And uh, the, the problem is, by the way, as I have already mentioned, that we don't have any direct flight. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a period of time, three or four months, one of the big Russian companies, yeah. they, they had a test uh, regime of flights, mm -hmm. flights so once a week, uh, but uh, unfortunately it, it has already finished and now we don't have, you need to get transferred, whether in Bangkok, or in Middle East, or okay. to go to Russia. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in any case, you, you can get only Moscow or any of the big cities. No, it's difficult to get uh, with just one stop to any of Russian uh, regions. You must have Small a chance to yeah. yeah. Because as far as I got in Malaysia, if you if you really want to uh, understand what is really Malaysia and real Malaysian people, uh, you, you, you should better go to outside of KL, outside of big cities, right? To the small campoons to talk to actually very uh, friendly, uh, very uh, smiling people who are living there. That's something incredible. When I talk to such people, I, I can understand that we are very, very similar with Russians. Right. We are in mentality, mm -hmm. not only in economy, but uh, everywhere. Okay. So that's, uh, that's a point, I think. Tune in to the Weekly Review next week as Maxim Burov talks about Russia's 2020 strategy and is the country competitive enough to be on par with other nations, exclusively on Channel 127 Unify. Right there, so from airport shopping to the Soviet Union, Weekly Review takes a breather now. Don't forget to send us your feedback on the show at weeklyreviewcapital at gmail.com or hashtag weeklyreviewcapital on Twitter. Our Facebook page is up and running so you can reach us there at facebook.com slash weeklyreviewcapital. We'll be right back after these messages.